Hello and welcome to Northwest Indian News. I'm Carissa Peapud Ramsey, a Tulalip tribal member. Over 1,000 people gathered at the Port of Olympia to welcome canoes to the final landing site of the 2012 Tribal Canoe Journey. Hosted by the Squaxin Island Tribe, the theme of the journey was Teachings of Our Ancestors. The journey provided an opportunity to honor the past and celebrate the revival of the canoe culture for future generations. To us, Chuckabick, the last great whaler name of uh, Kuyu Village, and it's uh, a sacred whaling canoe. Us, Chuckabick is the last great whaler who not, not only just bring one whale, he bring two whales. That's why it's named Us, Chuckabick, that's killer of two whales. It's heavier and sturdier than all the other kind of strip canoes that they have these days, and it's a uh, modeled after original whale and canoe within my family here. Yeah. As me, where I stand, it's important for what I do to carry on the songs and dances, what's been passed down to me, and carry on to the next generation. As a senior captain and a leader, that's what I do with my villages. In the past, this was the only means of transportation our people had. So if they wanted to go and hunt or gather food or anything, move from camp to camp, they had no choice but to jump in their canoe and paddle. This is what we do. This is who we are, right? Um, just because someone a few hundred years ago decided they want to, you know, make this their home didn't mean that the youth and the people forgot it. It's in our DNA. It's who we are as a people. For the youth to get an idea of who they are, it brings them back to their roots because there's a lot of outside influences with the media with you know social network with um, technology so they get caught up in that but they don't have that on this journey all they have is themselves their canoe family and the water and they eventually you see them disconnect from that world something comes alive in them they want more and they'll join more cultural things they'll want next year we're going next year so we got to train this year we got to fundraise we got to do this and that so it helps them take initiative and take responsibility for their own journey, therefore their life. Elwa was my first canoe journey, and that was 05. Seven years into this, I, I still feel like I'm learning learning from each journey because it's, it's different each time. The destination is different. Situations in the water is different. And just the camaraderie of uh, being on that water for eight hours with your, your second family. All this singing and, and dancing and being on the water, we're really taking care of our, the, our Indian, you know, we're we're feeding our Indian. I'm just thankful that I'm here right now, every year. We come here today traveling with South Sound Canoe Family. It's an honor to travel on your ancestral waters today. When we formed our canoe family, we decided, you know, we'd give this to the youth. They're the ones making the decisions. They're the ones learning how to run the business. And so we feel that, you know, they're the ones that are going to be carrying on for our next generations. Our canoe family is a mixture of tribes. And the reason why we're a mixture of tribes is because we're in the city. And many of our tribes have been relocated down here in the city. We have some youth from Florida that are Seminole from Sioux Country, Lower Elwha from Lummi. Uh, majority of our youth are from Yakima, Yakima Nation, and we also have elders that are from Yakima that are be joining us this year. We feel we need to be on this journey. We need to be able to know who we are as a people and understand our language, understand our songs, understand who our relatives are. This is what helps us out become a people again. 
We learn from the from our relatives here about um, you know, love for each other, respect, um, the importance of your culture, your identity, and through song and dance and through um, this vehicle that we're using of the canoes, we call it a kaupapa, an awesome event to be a part of. We, we've got a few um, our ancient songs that we sing, and then the one that really excites people is the, uh, the dance we call the haka. Um, some people call it the war dance. You know, you've got to try and scare your opponent. And if you're in war, you had to try and put them off or distract them or before you actually got into physical battle. So it's, um, it's a preparing yourself, getting that blood boiling and may look or seem a bit strange to people that haven't seen the haka. It's just how we do our things. Yeah. Gah! Yeah, so that's the haka, that's the pukana. When we return, we'll meet Chief Frank Nelson, one of the founders of today's canoe movement. It has always been my belief, right from the onset, that if we look far enough down below and the reflection coming back to you, it's the spirit of our ancestors. If I stay on the res, I'll be eight times less likely to drop out of college. If I stay on the res, I won't be just another number. I can learn biology in my native language. I can use my education to help my people. If I stay on the res, I'll be more likely to transfer to a university. Six times more likely. If I stay on the res, there's a nine in 10 chance I'll finish college. And I will finish college. I will learn about the old ways so my culture will live on. I will make my parents proud. I'll make my people proud. Our history will not be forgotten. If I stay on the res, I can get a quality education at a tribal college. At a tribal college. If I stay on the res. If, if I stay on the res. If I stay on the res. Learn more about the 33 tribal colleges and how they're helping Native American people and their reservations. The American Indian College Fund, educating the mind and spirit. I'm going to stay on the res. Washington's Indian tribes are investing in education. In Auburn, the Muckleshoot tribe just opened a new state-of-the-art $40 million school for up to 500 students in grades K through 12. The tribe has made an investment in, in the Muckleshoot people, not just into facilities, but into the, the people to gain an education. We want our children to be able to succeed in life. We want them to be able to compete with anyone in the world and achieve whatever they need to in their lives. In 1993, Chief Frank Nelson was called to greet the canoes traveling the Salish Sea on their way to Bella Bella. Since that time, Chief Nelson has continued to inspire and influence the tribal journey, sharing his songs and stories with the traveling canoes. NWIN had an opportunity to speak with Chief Frank Nelson and learn more about this inspiring cultural leader. I witnessed a contingent of canoes that came from Washington State to go to Victoria in 1993. Now it's the first glimpse I had uh, because I had no concept of canoes. Uh, the only canoes that I witnessed were archival pictures and all that sort of thing. At that time, I couldn't fathom how they would be able to travel that distance. and. Um, I was quickly captured by, you know, the spirit of uh, these seven canoes that were traveling on their way to Bala Bala. I didn't realize, you know, the impact that would have on me. Because uh, that particular year, I uh, actually got a log to, to carve my own family canoe. And you've seen it out there, Juno Bunchies. So we're very grateful to be able to be here to witness what tribal journeys has become for our young people. Now, 19 years after that first journey, Chief Nelson continues to travel these waters, sharing the healing power of the tribal journey. 
This year, his canoe, Loagula, was designated as the veteran's canoe to honor our veterans and give an opportunity for them to participate in the canoe journey. What gave me the idea to start a veteran's canoe is I was watching our young, young men coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan. And it's not like when we came back from uh, Vietnam. They were, these youngsters were welcomed home. So somewhere in the middle of all of that, the Vietnam vets, we were starting to get a little bit of recognition and you know that it's okay to be a veteran. It's okay to, to say you are. Even though there's uh, political views in regards to who owns this land, um, we have a firm belief that the veterans were out there to, to fight for not only the country, but for our First Nations people. And uh, given that commitment, uh, they deserve uh, all of the accolades, uh, the respect and honor that should be a part of it. When I came back, I didn't want, didn't want anybody to know. It's one of them deals where you get, you get off the bus and you go into the bathroom and find your civilian clothes right away and throw your uniform away out of fear of people throwing bags of feces at you and stuff. You know, we know all of the the complications that are part of their lives when they return from Afghanistan or you know all those places. A lot of them have experienced that trauma, sometimes not fully understanding what, why they are the way they are. But uh, Tribal Journeys offers at least a sense of peace. Tribal Journeys is that. It is a healing form for any type of uh, issues that are part of your life. Myself, my personal healing right now is for the trauma I experienced in boarding school. You know, my experience there was so traumatic that I put it behind me for a lot of years and I didn't want to deal with it. And it was just this year that I found the strength to be able to address it. And, um, and gratefully, I had my canoe involved. So I know now what the medicine means to our people with the canoe journeys. The first journey I did uh, was in 2010. And it just opened up a, a, no, a whole new avenue in my heart. Um, I started to, to learn how to become more giving and know um, a lot of my selfishness went away that I, that I never really realized that I had. The teachers that I have, uh, my elders, they quickly told me, says, as long as you're taking care of yourself, then the canoe will take care of you. And it's always been my belief right from the onset that if we look far enough down below and the reflection coming back to you, it's the spirit of our ancestors. They've traveled with us. Next, we'll visit the state capitol to see a historic exhibit of native art, history, and culture. That story and much more on this episode of Northwest Indian News. Washington's Indian tribes are investing in jobs, job creating investments like the $350 million container terminal in Tacoma. Kelp Tribe through Marine View Ventures is partnering with SSA Marine to develop a 200 acre three berth terminal, which at full build out will be the largest terminal in the, uh, the Pacific Northwest. Tribal governments are investing in Washington's economy, creating jobs in many different industries. Everyone's working together to make it happen. Who says that all good things must come to an end? That nothing lasts forever? That you can't turn the tide for good? For us, protecting nature comes so naturally. We're the tribes in Western Washington, stewards and have been for centuries to come. Washington's Indian tribes are investing in health care. The Jamestown Sklalem tribe is expanding their health care clinic to meet an ever-growing community need. Quality health care of our people, of our citizens, Indian and non-Indian alike, 
is essential for our future. This new 35,000 square foot clinic will provide medical services and be open to the general public. Tribal governments are investing millions of dollars each year across our state to improve health and dental care in our communities. That's the bottom line for us, is, is quality health care. While canoes gathered in the Port of Olympia, another celebration was happening at the State Capitol Building as an exhibit of Native art, history, and culture was unveiled. Entitled, We're Still Here, it is the first Native American exhibit to ever show in the Capitol Building. And the BOAN was at the opening ceremonies to bring you the story. Native Americans aren't just about our history. They're really about the soul of Washington State. It is important for us to recognize that since the arrival of the white man and woman, uh, the tribes have had to fight in so many ways to keep their traditions, their languages, their beliefs, their way of life. And today, the contributions of our Native people enrich Washington in so many ways. They help protect our precious natural environment. They teach us about cultural practices that we would do well to emulate. They contribute to the economic growth and prosperity of the people of this state. The theme for the next year is about tribal history and culture in the state of Washington. And the theme is, we're still here. The non-Indians aren't going anywhere. The tribes have always been here. We're not going anywhere. So we need to learn how to work together. And the best way to work together is understanding each other's history and culture. Open history books, there's 10 pages of Marilyn Monroe and Elvis Presley, but you have, very, you have one, one page of Martin Luther King, none, none of the Indians, and it's always sad. They talk about the massacres, they talk about what the savages did, but they never talk about the indigenous people of this land, how their livelihood was fishing and hunting and gathering, how their spirituality was strong, how they hung together as a tribe and took care of each other. There was no poor people, no rich people. They shared their wealth. They had potlatches, and they'd all come together, have big dinners, family dinners, and, and they never talk about that. In the public school system where I was raised, Indian history, we did not spend a lot of time on. So any little piece like this museum display that they have here um, to help the public school students learn more about tribes in Washington, I really do appreciate. We are visited all the time. In fact, last year there were around 70,000 students that came through the Capitol. So I think it is very important they learn their history and, and learn the history from the point of view of the indigenous people as well. Uh, the Indians who have lived here for thousands of years so that's the inspiration for this exhibit. And so when the students come in and tour the Capitol Rotunda, for those who have the opportunity to come into the Secretary of State's office and see the display, I think it's something that they will learn more about the tribes in Washington State. I'm really excited about this because this will help me educate my peers, and also the citizens of, of the state of Washington, that there are tribes still here in the state of Washington, and we're not going anywhere. It is very important for the citizens of our state to have some context in terms of the, the decisions they're making, in terms of whom they elect to public office, and in terms of the issues. Uh, they need really an understanding of how we got to here from there. And very importantly, is understanding the relationship between the state and, and the tribes. Uh, we saw some huge problems with the Indian fishing situation, and I think it's important that people learn from this so that in the future uh, we won't repeat mistakes made in the past. I grew up in a fishing ranch. I grew up on these, on these walking up and down these um, stairs and protesting and, you know, I 
I've done a lot in my life, but one thing I would like to, to leave is that, that our people would be proud of who they are, that, that the non-Indians should be proud that they share land with a real indigenous people. You see everybody going and bringing all these people from all over the world to come in, give and enlighten them with spirituality when they have it right here, when they have it right in their own home. The exhibit was created by the Washington State Heritage Center and can be seen in the Secretary of State's office through April of 2013. Visit nwin.tv where you can view every episode of Northwest Indian News on demand. At that time, I couldn't fathom how they would be able to travel that distance. You can also watch NWIN and other Native programming at kanutv.com. Coming up next, we'll learn about a water quality study made possible with the help of Tribal Canoe Journey. Washington Indian tribes are investing in the environment. The Nisqually tribe has undertaken the restoration of the Nisqually River Delta. The goal of the project is to remove all the dikes, reflood the estuary, and bring back, helping back the salmon runs. The Delta is a huge piece of our environmental efforts. So we feel this really deep internal um, desire to keep the river as well as these surrounding prairies in the best shape possible. Well, culture is important to the Suquamish people because it's an honoring of our ancestral ways and traditions and the ways that have been part of this landscape for thousands of years. So for us, we're honoring our ancestors. We're also building for our future, for our future generations, our youth. You are welcome to come ashore, and yet our culture is alive. I couldn't be more proud of the Suquamish. Washington's Indian tribes are investing in natural resources. The main goal of the Talela Forestry Program is to preserve over half of our reservation in the forestry classification. The Tulalips manage their tribal forest lands, create jobs, and also work with the U.S. Forest Service in our national forests. We have a very unique collaborative effort here with the uh, Tulalip tribes to restore the landscape for future generations. Tribal stewardship of natural resources across Washington is an investment that benefits everyone. Welcome back to Northwest Indian News. In 2008, the Coast Salish Gathering, a community of tribes and First Nations, partnered with the U.S. Geological Survey for a water quality analysis of the Salish Sea. Since then, the groundbreaking study has been using canoes to tow water testing instruments during tribal journey and map water quality along the way. Five years ago, we teamed up with the USGS, creating a partnership where we'd use traditional culture with 21st century technology and marrying the two. We uh, embarked with about five different canoe families in 2008 to tow these uh, water quality instruments and map surface water temperature, salinity, pH, dissolved oxygen, and turbidity. These are all parameters that are really important to everything that grows in our coastal waters and provides us with food and um, the entire functioning of the food web. When you take these probes and you put them behind a motorized boat, they get crop wash, whereas if you are dragging them behind a canoe, you have none of that. You have you know, natural human power propelling these canoes and there's no prop wash and no exhaust coming and interfering with these probes as they're collecting that important data we can go into areas where larger vessels cannot go. They cannot get into those intertidal areas where the eelgrass is and where the, you know, the sea life near shore is. These are the areas where ab abundant shellfish, um, juvenile fish, especially salmonids, some of our important forage fish, use the near shore for a large portion of their life or important portions of their life. And it's the exact areas where land-based pollutants, activities that humans conduct, influence the coastal ocean. 
So it's this intersection of very important habitats, marine resources, and impacts of runoff that we're measuring really well, sometimes for the first time. So far, there was some findings that everybody knew, but yet, yet it confirms degradation. There was a big plume coming out of Fraser River, a big one of uh, algae that is eating up oxygen. We've all seen the crashes of rockfish and salmon, and we're really concerned now that we have the right science and input from every perspective, including peoples who lived here and knew these environments for maybe up to thousands of years. When we do things as a group, working with each other, helping one another, we seem to get more done sharing and taking care of the resource so that it will return again and again. That's what sustained our ancestors. We get to talk to the tribal members and especially the elders about what they notice over time and the changes they've seen, the changes they have in their oral history. And this is a gold mine of information that a lot of scientists don't necessarily include into their programs. And I know that the, a number of tribes and First Nations have so much of this knowledge and want it to be integrated into our, our larger understanding. And we were very pleased a couple years ago that uh, Interior Secretary uh, Salazar uh, back in DC awarded us with a high honor for the work that we did in partnering with the USGS so it was recognized nationally. It had been a great addition to this uh, work that we're trying to do to bring awareness to the environmental issues in the Salish Sea, so it's been a fantastic partnership. To see the results collected over the past five years, visit www.usgs.gov to find maps showing the routes and findings along the Salish Sea. I'm Carissa P. Pud Ramsey, and I hope you've enjoyed the stories we brought to you today. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time on Northwest Indian News.